Joe, you're involved in Native Gospel Ministry here in Ottawa. Do um, you want to share with us the vision of this organization? I used to work as uh, executive director for uh, the Native Evangelical Fellowship of Canada. And uh, when we left that ministry in 1994, uh, I had a choice, you know, what to do. I wanted to go back to school and get my doctorate degree or uh, start a ministry. And uh, in the end, I decided to uh, start this ministry, uh, Native Gospel Ministries of Canada. It, it is a parachurch ministry, and uh, we have our head office here in Ottawa. But our, our ministry is uh, to, to help the churches. And uh, I do uh, a lot of preaching still. I do uh, uh, itinerary preaching. When I go into the Cree communities, I, I, I do uh, a lot of work there. I, I get invited a lot to do uh, uh, workshops and uh, seminars. I also uh, uh, get invited to do uh, individual counseling. And so when I do that, uh, uh, you know, I meet a lot of people in the Cree communities, especially around James Bay, where I'm from. Uh, I speak the language. I'm a Cree Indian. And so uh, a lot of times uh, I'll even go on the radio and uh, they'll ask me to talk about certain topics or sometimes they'll call me and say, can you preach a Christmas message or something? So I, I do that kind of work. Hi, welcome to Tribal Trails. Our guests today are Joe and Sheila Jolly. They live in Ottawa, Ontario. They have a heart for their own people to come to know Christ. So let's listen to them share. And you have this written a book, Going and Growing Through Grief. And uh, you, you told me that this has to do with your, your seminar that you give. Could you just uh, share with us a little bit of how that came about? And I, I, would, I went to uh, Providence Theological Seminary uh, for my Doctor of uh, Ministry. And uh, in my last year of the, taking uh, school there, uh, I had to do a major project for one of my classes. Eh? and uh, it was on pastoral care and they gave us a, a list of uh, topics to choose from. I chose uh, one on how, uh, developing 10 lesson outlines on how to start a grief support group. Uh, I thought that would be a little easy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but anyway, I, I started to do research on grief and as I was uh, doing research on grief, uh, I began to realize that uh, I didn't really understand grief as I thought I did. And uh, I learned a lot from that. And so I developed these uh, 10 lesson outlines. And uh, since they were all done, I, I figured I should teach them. And the first place I taught them was at uh, Cree Gospel Chapel in Moose Factory, Ontario, because uh, the book uh, I wrote, uh, Going and uh, Growing Through Grief, is uh, from a biblical perspective. When people don't uh, grieve properly, it can affect their health. And so that was in February 1978. And uh, I did a grief workshop in Moose Factory, and uh, there was a good response. And then eventually uh, people heard about it, and they started asking me to do uh, grief seminars uh, in the different three communities in James Bay. And uh, shortly after um, done grief, so, uh, grief seminars for a few years, I decided to, I should put more body into the lessons, and I made a proposal to George that I should write a book. And so that's what I did. I used the t 10 lesson outlines that I had there and uh, uh, just used them as chapters and uh, that's what you have there, going and going through grief. If someone was going through grief today, uh, what would you tell them? What would you, how would you share with them? If somebody is going through grief, uh, one thing I would tell someone is that they should uh, educate themselves about the grieving process because, uh, and there's a lot of material uh, that's available. And uh, a lot of people uh, tell me uh, uh, when they have gone through grief, I read your book and uh, it helped me a lot. So because uh, there's a lot of things uh, uh, to learn about grief. I, very basic, uh, uh, what I'm gonna share is that there's a beginning and there's a, you do your grief work, there's a process. The goal is to finish your grief. And normal grief can take about two years 
And traumatic grief can take about seven years. And there's, and there's people out there today that have gone through grief, they have unresolved grief. But so the goal is to, to finish your grief. And so it's important for people to educate themselves about the grieving process. You can buy books in a Christian bookstore, which that I would recommend. But you can also go on to go on the internet. I often tell people that you can go on God Tube. There's a there's a tube they're called God Tube. I go there myself, and uh, there you can get things that are more from a bi biblical perspective. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. I know. Sometimes people think that uh, grief is just when someone dies or when you lose someone dear, but uh, you mentioned that not having children was also a source of grief. And Could you just share uh, what you learned about grief? Well, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, after Joseph uh, wrote this book, I was going to encounter uh, so much grief involving my own family. His mother died. Uh -huh. Then his dad died. But in, in the middle of all that, my sister developed cancer, who was younger than me with five kids. And at the time, I didn't have a child when she got sick. And I said, Lord, take me home, not her, because she has five kids. Then her, little, her kids were still small. And I really wanted to go to heaven and not her to mm -hmm. pass on. So um, the, uh, Joseph studying this helped me prepare uh, what was going to happen in my own family. My sister got sick with cancer and my mom developed Alzheimer's around the same time and my dad needed heart surgery. 
And um, during that time, a 10-year period, can you imagine that? I can't even imagine all the things that ha happen now when I'm thinking more clear. Uh, the last uh, type of cancer my sister developed was brain cancer, and that's when they have to cut, uh, sob, uh, you know, your skull, uh, take out the cancer, or work two places. And she couldn't talk right, and she, she wasn't the same before uh, us before. And that was really difficult for everyone in my family. And then my, my mother developing uh, this Alzheimer's, then she developed um, ovarian cancer. And that was the question I had. How come my mom has ovarian cancer? She has Alzheimer's. She doesn't even know she has cancer, and she's going to die soon. And then my dad, at the same time, had to have uh, heart surgery in Kingston. That's where they fly the people from the north to Kingston to have a serious uh, surgery. And during the seven hours of uh, surgery, it was the longest day of my life waiting to see if he would come through OK. And even when he was in the intensive care, the doctors would say, tell us if he moves a little bit or blinks his eye. We don't even know if he's there. So you can imagine the intenseness we had, the, the tense setting, wondering if he was there. Well, we talked to him again. What about my mom in her sick bed? My sister over in Sudbury suffering with her cancer. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And so my, my dad recuperated to the doctor's amazement because I said, we are going to pray for my dad and he's going to come out of this. And every time the doctor gave us a report, I said, well, what report do we have from God? I would thank the doctor. We can pray more effectively then. But God did uh, some miracles in his life. He recuperated. And uh, the next uh, six months, he went back to Kingston. And the doctor said, I never, ever would thought I would see you walking into my office again. That's how serious the operation was. And they didn't expect them to live. And so he recuperated and only lived to see his wife, who was my mother, and his uh, favorite daughter pass on. And they told us the Christmas of 2002 that your mom may live till spring if she eats good, and your sister may also live until spring. And keep in mind that my dad was recuperating from this serious uh, operation. And he was able to get up and almost be normal then and to come to the uh, uh, funeral. My mom and my sister died during the week of my birthday, and that was hard. And uh, so, you know, you're just in shock. And being a Christian, you, you're not exempt from a lot of these crises and, crises and hardships. And I said, God, how am I going to get through this? My sister's gone, my mom is gone, and, and my dad is not fully recovered from his illness. When you go through deep waters, I'll be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord your God. So as time went on, I'm in shock. Um, maybe it's a double crisis, I don't know. But the following Christmas, which is not even a year since my sister and mom died, uh, I get a call in Ottawa here and saying, your dad is not doing too well. It was late at night, midnight, and just before Christmas. The year's not over from when my mom passed away. So I said, God, he's in your hands. I, I know I cannot do anything. I'll just have to pray for him. And whatever your will is, I'm ready if you should make him well or take him home. So a few minutes later, I got up off my knees praying for him. The phone rings again. And it's my cousin crying. She said, your dad is gone. And I'm just there in shock at night. My mom's gone. My sister's gone. Now my dad. We were getting ready. It was December the 19th. And I said, are we going home to celebrate Christmas in the form of a funeral? And our young son, this is his, how many funerals has he been gone to now? And I felt terrible. So we went up and I asked Lord, what are we going to do about Christmas? It's not Christmas, it's a funeral. And I said, Lord, help. So be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid and do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And he spoke to me very clearly and he said, Sheila, Christmas is not meant to be celebrated the way I have intended it to be celebrated. If you focus on the true, true meaning of Christmas, everything will be fine. And it just lit up in my thinking, changed my thinking and my grief. And we had a wonderful Christmas with my other family members and uh, sisters. And here we went home to bury my dad on the 23rd of December. And that's what God told me. And I just thank God that he gives us supernatural strength and power. And I would like to say that if there's people out there that's going through such a traumatic time, a double crisis maybe, God brought me through that when I thought it would never end. It took me five years to work on my grief journey, and I'm thankful that Joe studied it before I encountered all this difficult time. So I started off with a wonderful time having a miracle baby, and then the three crises that came into my life, very bad. And now I like to say God had ended that crisis. I cl brought closer to my crisis and that my impossible dream happened and I graduated with a master's of, of uh, leadership and management uh, course, which was against all odds going through this grief crisis. I was still studying at school and part of this training helped me to hang on as well. I had a goal to finish and I said, okay, the enemy has done all this and I know that God is not finished with me or anyone because his power lives in me. The Bible tells us that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. And that's the power we have. And I like to praise the Lord that God gave me a wonderful son. And the end of my grief journey, I encountered an impossible dream of graduating. I was never a good student. And... Um, I like to celebrate today uh, uh, continually that I, I never dreamed I'd ever pass and manage encountering going through school again at my age. So no one's ever too old to learn because God has a lot of work for us to do. That's, that's absolutely true. That's wonderful. Um, prayer is really, really important. So you really saw that prayer helped you through your crisis. Prayer was continually in my life every chance I had. In my studies, I'd cry on my books, and I'd pray, and I'd ask the Lord to help me. And when I look back today, I, and I say, that's not Sheila Jolly. That's the Lord in me. Mm -hmm. Because I think we fail to see that God, through us, were able to do things we never dreamed. But, and, and so prayer was one of the major part of my life every day. And listening to the Word of God on the radio, I filled my mind with the Word of God through prayer, through listening to messages by other preachers. That's the only thing that brought me through. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Each day I'm on, no wash in my gun. What about the, the young people? We hear a lot about the new generation coming up. Uh, how are things going uh, up in the James Bay? Uh, the young people? Well, you know, like I do counseling, yeah? So I, I know that uh, they have aspirations, you know, uh, to go to school, some of them, you know, but there's a lot of uh, Native young people that have dropped out, and there's a lot of problem with uh, alcohol and, uh, and drugs, yeah? 
So, uh, but uh, they, some of them are going to school, yeah. There are future leaders, you know. So we're doing uh, the, the best we can, I guess, uh, to encourage uh, our native youth, you know, to, to get more education. Mm -hmm. So you find that education would be uh, very helpful for a young person? Well, it, it, it is the key uh, to, uh, for uh, the native people in the past, in the present, and in the future. And you know, when you talk about uh, self-government, eh, I often tell people uh, uh, what, what we need to see happen in the next uh, 10 years, maybe. We need to see more native people who are lawyers, doctors, you know, and uh, certified electricians and plumbers and uh, even pilots, you know, uh, this is what we need to see. And to have those uh, qualifications, you need education. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with His comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. Okay, I want to talk with youth uh, also at this time about uh, grieving and about loss in our lives. The Word of God tells us that our Heavenly Father is the God of all comfort and that He uses uh, the comfort that He gives to us to help us to, to bring comfort to other people too. So there's a lot of things that cause uh, disappointment and grief in our lives. As a young, young person, I, when I was small, you know that uh, there's a lot of, where my dad caused my mom a lot of hurt, um, a lot of drinking, you know, like a neglect uh, of, from my mom too, of us as children, that, that causes a lot of grief in my life and caused, caused me to, to really uh, have pain in my heart. And so I, I bring these things to the Lord and the Lord uh, brings comfort to me uh, not just from his word but also through other people and also to young people too um, when they um, when they have a a friend who, who they've known for a while take their lives that causes a lot of grief in their lives or even uh, young people uh, where their parents um, have left them you know just their, their dad goes and away and when they're small and, and their parents divorce uh, it maybe even your dad has, or your mom has, has taken their lives. A lot of, lot of pain in your heart uh, because of those things. And, and, and the type of pain too is, is, is very um, different in, in different things. One uh, where, you know, if, you're, if, if your friend or if your dad, let's say your dad or your mom took their lives, then you would say, you know, why would they do that? Like, why wouldn't they feel like our relationship with me wasn't worth uh, continuing on for? So, so very deep pains in our lives. And, and so how do we deal with those, those pains in our lives? I believe it, it comes through help from other people that have gone through the same things. It comes through talking about those things with another person. I believe Christ, that when, when Lazarus died, he experienced grief in his humanity. You know, he, he, he went to this, this place and, uh, with his disciples and they heard news that his, his friend Lazarus was sick. And, uh, you know, he stayed a little while, and then, then he went there and found out that, that Lazarus was dead. And then Mary and Martha come to him, and they say, you know, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus says, you know, take me to where, where, where he is, where, where they have laid him. And they take Jesus there. And while he's on his way, the people are, are, are weeping. They're mourning this death. And then Christ cries out uh, when he sees the people weeping. The Bible says he looks, up, looks upon them, and, and he weeps. And I believe his weeping is, is uh, he's feeling their pain. And God feels our pain when we weep, when we hurt. And he's able to, to through coming alongside us, uh, bring comfort to our lives. And through, through that comfort that God gives to us, uh, we're able to find strength uh, to go on. So maybe you've experienced loss in your life. I just want to encourage you to, to really see that the Lord sees your hurt. But also, too, I just want to encourage you to talk with someone. You know, talk, talk with a friend. Uh, talk with a, with a minister. 
you may be a call in, call in to, to, the, to the program here, have someone talk with you and, and pray with you. Because uh, our loss sometimes can be so overwhelming that uh, it causes us to be depressed and even want to want to feel like it's not worth going on ourselves. But God can help us through. God can carry us through our grief. And He can somehow use that to, to build our lives uh, for us to be able to help other people. Like again I said before, like our, our days on earth are, are few and those days are full of trouble. But God is able to help us through. Look to the Lord. He is able to help you through. The Lord bless you. Thanks, Howard, for those words of encouragement. God is able to see through the grief that you might be going through right now. If you need prayer or you just need somebody to talk to, call us. Don't give up. Look to Jesus. Thank you for listening. Some say he was an outlaw, that he roamed across the land with his band of unschooled ruffians and a few old fishermen. No one knew just where he came from or exactly what he'd done. But they said it must have been something bad that it kept him on the run. They said he was an outlaw. Some say he was a poet that he spoke upon a hill that his voice could calm an angry crowd and make the wind stand still he spoke in many parables that few could understand but the people would sit for hours and hours just to listen to this man they said he was an outlaw Some say he was the sorcerer, the man of mystery. He could walk upon the water, he could make a blind man see. They said he conjured wine at weddings, and did tricks with fish and bread. That he talked of being born again, and raised people from the dead. They said he was an outlaw. Some say a politician who spoke of being free, who was followed by the masses on the shores of Galilee. He spoke out against corruption and he bowed to no decree. And they feared his strength and power, so they nailed him to a tree. They said he was an outlaw. Some say he was the Son of God, a man above all men. But he came to be a servant and to set us free from sin. And that's who I believe he was. Yeah, that's what I believe. And we best be getting ready 